Ryan Reese Show from Southern California. This is the Ryan Reese Show. Post your questions using at Ryan Reese on his Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook. Are you ready? Oh yeah, it's going down tonight, Sean McKeon. I'm stoked to have you guys in or to have you in studio. What's up? I'm back. I'm back. You are back. Feels you know good. What? I don't like you being gone. No? Yeah, you know, Saturday night sometimes I'm having Nerf, Nerf gun fights in my house with a bunch of my kids and you're getting ready for a Sunday morning. It's been crazy because the last couple of months uh, with all the COVID-19, the ministry has gone through a lot of changes. Yeah. So I'm just having to really be on point. You know, that's why I haven't been able to be here on some of these days, but I'm glad to be here tonight. Uh, I got to lift my chair up, man, because like you look real tall. Uh, Ryan, And I don't you're know if there's something wrong, wrong with my chair. <laughs> I feel like Frodo over Blame here. Blame it on Baggins, the chair. Looking for the Shire. <laughs> um, you know, I had Holland Davis on the uh, show a couple weeks ago, and man, people were talking about demonic stuff mm-hmm. with, you know, their cousin that sold their soul to the devil, and all this crazy stuff. Last week was a powerful show, but this week I want to touch on some more subjects, like you know. Maybe you're uh, going through like um, you're battling fear, common. And I have a story about fear tonight. You know, uh, anxiety. Yeah. Uh, maybe you're having bouts of uh, depression. You know, maybe you don't even have a job and you're looking for a job and you're looking for God to open a door and you just need prayer. You know, maybe there's some struggle with your uh, your kids. You know, I've been getting these DMs of, of of parents that are struggling with their kids and. You know, they just feel like there's no hope. Well, there is hope. You know, mm-hmm. God is always working, right? You know, it's in his timing that he uh, he does his thing. Like, uh, there's a story about that I'm going to talk to you in a minute <laughs> after okay. I plug this stuff. Yep. Um, I got some stuff in my mind that I definitely want to talk about uh, with some Jesus stories to uh, encourage you guys tonight. Um, you know, I know that you were going uh, shopping for a new uh, firearm, a new, yep. a new pistol. Did you get it? I got it. Yeah, it's on order. So you got the Smith and Wesson? I got the yeah MP Shield. MP Shield, Smith yes. and Wesson. I got the one that you were showing. Dude, me. Thing is sick, huh? I got it with the sights too. You got the sights. Mm-hmm. That's the one I want to get. <laughs> I want to check it out when you get it. Yeah, I was wondering if you ever ended up getting that. I got it. You know, you know, they sold so many guns since the <laughs> everything that's been going on. So crazy, like you had to make appointments multiple places you couldn't go because it was like locked down. They were going to they weren't going to take any more appointments for like two more weeks. I found a spot, was able to go. Got an appointment, went in. It's actually pretty cool when there's an appointment because it's not crowded inside, but I was able to get it, but it's on back order. I'll get it in a couple of weeks. When, when do you get it? Um, It said two to six weeks, but most likely in about two, three weeks. So it's perfect yeah. for me. You have to do the whole background check to get, you know, the ammo and all that stuff. Yeah. So yeah. it's all, I was seeing those stats too. I don't know what the numbers were, but they were astronomical as far as hundreds of thousands of people that had bought uh, firearms in the last uh, couple of weeks, couple months. It's been pretty crazy. I know like Bass Pro Shop, multiple places were having to shut down and not actually sell um, guns for a little while because they were so back ordered on background checks was just too hard. It was it was absolutely crazy. I took a picture. Uh, I posted. Here we go. This is from On Target. This is from everything that's been going on. On Target is a it's a shooting range. Oh, yeah, you posted down that. here in Orange County. Yeah. Uh, did you get your gun from there? Uh, no, I got it straight from Turner's. Yeah, okay, cool. All right, here we go. So it says, uh, let's see, this is about the COVID, COVID-19. So this is the interesting facts of uh, some of the effects of uh, that COVID-19 had. This is from California. It says, uh, let's see, Orange County, here we go. Uh, caused more than 2.5 million firearms to be purchased. It caused the entire supply Chain to become emptied as billions of nine millimeters were purchased, resulting in back orders for more than can be more than can be produced in a year of most manufacturers. That's crazy. Hmm. Creating more than five a half a million new firearm owners, created the new uh, uh, created the need for hundreds of firearms training classes across the country, infused much needed uh, capital into the entire firearms industry and infrastructure. Um, educated thousands of ridiculous firearm laws and required to purchase, uh, discovered the waiting period laws, found about about uh, real purchases. Just um, it just it goes on and got on. But that's so interesting that, you know, there was this whole thing going on in America where they were trying to ban firearms. And this is part of our Constitution. Mm-hmm. And now, even as you're looking at everything that's going on um, yeah. with the crazy world. 
there's people you've I know you've already you've already owned firearms and mm-hmm. me we grew up with 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 guns and stuff you know hunting and and all that stuff but what's interesting is that uh, right now what's going on with all the riots and everything and then you have like you know people trying to ban firearms and they remember they were trying to ban like you should only have you should only be able to have like three three bullets in right. your in your in your magazine right. Well, everything that's going on, dude, there's riots. I was in Beverly Hills two days ago. Oh, Friday night. I saw that. Yeah, I was in Beverly Hills driving through uh, the day to go do lunch with uh, Allie and, and Will. And, dude, they were they were uh, replacing glasses in the windows. Like, Because I was right there on Rodeo Drive Yep. in that area. Dude, oh, that's they what got out, hit a couple weeks ago. Dude, they knocked out the windows there. Yep. They had boards on the windows. I mean, they hit it. And especially if stuff gets hectic now with like the whole no police thing that's mm-hmm. going on. You know, they're trying to vote. I think in Minneapolis, I think I read in the news that they they're said that the, the Muslims and, and and Tifa will will uh, yeah. uh, keep the city under control. <laughs> right. right. Uh, I don't think so. So it's it's pretty interesting times to be living in. And, you know, we're family, man. We have our kids and our wives. So, you know, we have the right to bear arms. I, you know, I think it's a good thing for, for people to uh, always have protection for their family. But not only that, I think it's very wise when you know if, if you do do that, it's wise to uh, do training. Yeah, I have a, I have a pass at, at the at the range. I go all the time. You know, me and my wife. You know, it's good to train. I've taken a lot of classes. It's like almost like you know, it's like uh, when you get you know when you get your if you're gonna drive and you got to get your permit. You know, mm-hmm. I think it's good it's, instead of just getting in a car and driving and crashing. Yeah, you know, it's a you firearm. Practice. You should practice, learn how to how to use it, and because um, you know, it just might save your life one day or save someone else's life. Yeah, you you want to use wisdom for sure, you know. And like we have seen that our culture of the United States of America over the last few months go through so many things, and um, the firearms purchases are really linked to the beginning of COVID nineteen because as all of like people were fearing like food sh- shortages and you know those big lines were taking place. Uh, unemployment, what's going to take place, you know, you know, if houses are getting broken too. And so I, I, I think what it caused a lot of people, hey, am I ready? Am I prepared? I, I think we've all been exhorted over the years. Hey, you never know. An uh, earthquake happens, a, br- a bridge goes down. Are you prepared? Do you have food? Do you have things in order uh, for your family? I, I believe the Bible tells us uh, to use wisdom in the days that we're living in as well and you're seeing the effects of it in our culture today exactly well here i have a question this came in from from online it says how can i find purpose in such a chaotic world mm. well we just talked about the chaoticness yeah they're trying to shut everything down again right at uh, some capacity a little bit yeah yeah they're like COVID <laughs> has has grown well <laughs> everyone has been out looting and rioting right and no one told everyone to stay home so yes it has uh it's this is going to be an interesting uh Next 12 months, we, for sure. You know, without a question, like, how, how do you find purpose in, like, with a chaotic life? Well, one thing about the Lord is he's not chaotic. Um, the Lord grants rest and peace. And it is so easy in the days that we're living with, uh, living in, to get overwhelmed by stuff. Um, I think it's important to educate yourself of what's taking place in our world. I mean, the Bible, you think about Daniel in the Old Testament. He was a man of his times. He understood the temperature of the nation. Uh, Jeremiah, the prophet, the same thing. He knew the temperature that was uh, going through the nation. Um, but we shouldn't be moved like the world, like of just totally like losing our minds or being so worried. Yeah. I, I think we're, what God's moving in my heart during this time is just to be a student of the word in the aspect of being able to communicate clearly to people. Uh, people are really inundated with a lot of information. And I, I think it's important for us to be able to communicate with people with differing views and not get ourselves walking in the flesh, which can be hard to do because sometimes you see things and maybe the people post something or they say something of, of ignorance. We have to take a, 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 we have to walk in the spirit of God. When we walk in the spirit of God, we will have wisdom to deal with every person that we come in contact with. We don't want to let political issues and things that are going on in our world to divide us, to divide our families and relationships. I've been, uh, you know, counseling a lot of people the last couple of weeks that I, I talked to this girl the other day that a friendship that she's had for 26 years yeah. because of all that's taken place and their different views has caused their relationship to totally cease. Yeah. And it, it, it's just not true. So I think like during these times right now, 
One thing that's unchanging is God's word and a relationship with God. We're here. God's called us to this time. And for, for myself, I'm just praying, Lord, what kind of voice do you want me to have in the world? How, how do you want me to be a, a witness to my friends and my family? How am I going to do ministry? Ministry's changing in some ways, and we just have to be open and being led by God's Spirit. And I think that's the greatest thing I'd say, be led by the Spirit of God. And with that said, you know, I've, I've also been trying to figure out as I'm here in this in this time, and obviously our whole mission with the Whosoever's is the Great Commission, and what, you know, my voice was going to be in here and and through this and not, I'm not going to just jump on a uh, jump on the bandwagon. We've seen some, <laughs> this thing showed uh, some interesting colors of, of people mm-hmm. and pastors and leaders and musicians. And yeah. I don't even know what you've been following with Lecrae and with Andy yep. Minos. Have yeah. you seen all that I've stuff seen that, that these guys are yep. doing? Yeah. It's pretty crazy. They're like dividing yeah. Um, yeah. the church. And then even like a lot of pastors, how they're jumping on the bandwagon with, with certain agendas. And for me, I decided that I was going to, um, first of all, I wanted, I just go back to Jesus. Well, what would Jesus say in the middle of all this stuff? Well, I go back to that verse and I even posted on my Instagram. Jesus says the lovely, your, the Lord God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And maybe if you don't even believe in God. Okay. Well, the next thing he says, love your neighbor as yourself. Yep. So our neighbor is everybody. Yep. So that's all colors of, of people. It's all races. It's all people in the world. It's, it's everybody. So we got to love, we got to love people through this. And there is, the Bible talks about there'll be a great deception in the last days. And there's a lot of stuff going on as we've done past shows, what's going on. So it's good to pay attention and see how God wants to use you in this time. So I've been sitting tight, you know, waiting to, for, for, for the green light from God. And about a week ago, I had this idea of going, okay, you know what? Let's see where there is opportunity to do ministry where, where you can actually meet with people where maybe COVID's not so crazy. Probably, where, yeah. uh, where there's, we're in the United States. There's different states that aren't totally shut down. Mm-hmm. So as I started doing my homework, I realized that Idaho, it, I was up there a couple of weeks ago with my, my family, and I realized that they're, they're, they're wide open. Mm-hmm. So there's ministry opportunities. So I, I basically said, you know what? I'm going to go do a skate park tour. So we'll do a full skate park outreach in Idaho. There's like, you know, I don't know, there's seven good parks and then there's like three other ones that are like kind of janky that, uh-huh. that aren't that good. So I said, from here, I'm going to put together a trip. I'm going to create a flyer for it. Um, I'm going to call the team and see if if they want to go. And then I'll pray and see if God just opens up the door and confirms. Mm-hmm. So I just prayed. I said, God, if you want me to go, I hit the whole team up and they all said they could go. So then I That's waited good. and That's I said, okay, right. God, if you want me to go, then, then have someone contact me just or, or just give me the green and give me a sign that I need to go up there. Well, about a week later, I get a call from Jairus from, from our last movie. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's like, hey, dude, he's like, our church wants to help donate to go, if you guys are going to go to Idaho on the trip. I'm like, perfect. That's, That's the green light. So, dude, I made a flyer for the skate parks. We put a, we put a post. Now churches and people are contacting us. They want us to do ministry with them. So we're trying to go into the ju- juvenile detention centers. They have um, uh, with, uh, Indian reservations. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's doors that get in there too. Uh, there's uh, the high schools, obviously, because like you know the school, the the, the skate park events. Yeah. You know, and, and that's in the culture right there. And then even partnering with churches and their youth groups and, and whoever. That's legit. So man. basically, I'm taking my family. I'm getting the kids. We're packing up the the car. We're driving up there. We're gonna get an Airbnb and post up. And I'm gonna get there. And it's it's just a cool way, like. It, I'm, I'm basically showing up with flyers. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around to all the skate parks. I'm going to go to all the skate shops. I'm going to go talk to people. And I'm going to start inviting people to the skate parks. And I'm going to see what God's going to do. It's almost like that story I read earlier today when Jesus was with his disciples. And they were, and you know, they're all hungry. All the people were hungry, all the multitudes. And they go, well, what, how can we feed him? And someone gave, brings, brought some bread and some fish. And he got it, and he said he held it up to heaven, and he blessed it to the Lord. Mm-hmm. And God multiplied that little bit, and he multiplied it, and it was used to feed everyone. In that same way, I'm mm-hmm. here in this pandemic. Right now, I don't got much. We don't we don't have much to do because we're stuck with yeah. a lot of things are closed down. But I'm like, God, I got a skateboard. The Whosoever's has this little mini sound system. We got gas for a car, and we got a car. 
We could drive up, and all we have is literally these flyers, and we're like, mm-hmm. okay, God, we have these flyers. We're going to pass them out. You bless it. You get the people behind us, and then let's just see what happens, what God does with it. That's and right. and that's it. So you well, don't need all this, you know, we got to go, and we need thousands of dollars, and we need to do this huge production to go do ministry. We're going with flyers, and we're going to go. I'm going to personally drive through this city for two weeks straight, and let people know it exists. I saw your post like last week when you're saying you're going to Idaho and the thing, and like I'm like, that's dope. I didn't even know. And then just starting to see like the the momentum on it. And I, I know people are going to be excited, and I think it's cool. I think that's a perfect example of what I was saying about being led by the Spirit of God. You know, when you go through the book of Acts, when you go through Paul, you go through Silas, you go through all of them, they hit roadblocks along the way sometimes. Sometimes there were riots that kicked them out of, out of the, the city at that time. Sometimes there was something that caused them to split and go separate directions. But all of it is they just stayed open. And sometimes they were arrested. Sometimes they were persecuted. But all of those things led up for another door. God might close a door, like maybe here in California for a little bit because it starts to reopen and get back to normal. But there are other opportunities. And I think that instead of us getting bummed out and discouraged, which a lot of people are getting bummed out and discouraged in the days that we're living in today. Mm -hmm. You mentioned it a second ago, depressions. I did a funeral last week for a um, uh, a drug overdose of a young young man, 23 years old, uh, myself and Wade. We at the church right now. Our first couple of funerals after the COVID-19, both uh, all three of them were linked to depression. Uh, two of them drug overdoses, and the other one suicide. This is what's going on right now. People have been locked up. People have been alone with their thoughts, not having communications with people, and we're starting to see a wave and people need hope in the days that we're living in today. So I'm glad that God's opened up that door. 100%. I'm going to give the number out. Uh, 888-564-6173. 888-564-6173. We are in studio with Sean McKeon and myself. I'm here. Um, yeah. So uh, let me, let me take another, uh, we got another question here. Um, I, I sent you a text of some questions. Yep. Uh, let's see. Okay, here we go. How can I reawaken a thirst for the word and prayer? How can I reawaken? Well, you know, honestly, in this, uh, well, you know, you take this one. I, I think what's important for us to realize is sometimes in your walk with God, you can go through dry spells where you kind of go through the wilderness where nothing connects. Um, but how to get back is always so simple. It's always through brokenness, and it is, starts in prayer. I believe it really starts in prayer, where you're like, Lord, and you got to be real before God. Yeah. You know, I was like, when I was about to get married, I was like, Lord, I don't want to make a mistake, Lord. you got to make it so clear and so obvious to me because I'm dumb. And the same thing with, like, when you go through these dry spells, Lord, I'm like, I'm tripping right now. And I need that. I need the word, but I don't feel like reading. I don't feel like sitting in this Bible study right now. I need a work of your Holy Spirit in my life. And it is walking by faith. Uh, and that is what walking by faith is. It's taking that first step. And when you take that first step, you will see that God will meet you there. He'll, he'll bless those steps. But what you don't want to do is stay stagnant, not go anywhere or go backwards. When you take that first step in prayer and in brokenness and openness and just really wanting a relationship with God, I believe that that's where it starts. I think you start a little bit of a program, like as far as, okay, dude, I'm going to get up. So this is kind of going to be an emotional thing. Like, I'm going to get up and I'm going to make time to read, or if it's in the day, or what, whatever it might be. Mm-hmm. Daniel, I give it as an example, like, it says that Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself. It's like, you just got to make a decision. Like, do I, I, do I like the way my life is right now? Mm-hmm. Is it working out? And most likely it's not. And that's why to get revived, it starts in prayer, brokenness every time. In the book of Revelation, when Jesus rebukes the church of Ephesus that was going through all the motions and that they had left their first love, but then he gives them a solution. He says, remember from where you have fallen, repent and do the same works that you did in the beginning. Remember you started walking with God, like church was important, the word was important, prayer was important. Get there, make it basic and simple, and you will see life starting coming back into your heart Mm -hmm. when it comes to the things of God. 100%. Yep. I, uh... I've been trying to, you know, sometimes you get working so much, you just kind of veer away because you get so uh, inundated with just so many things of, yes. of life and, yes. and being a parent and the whole thing. 
And yeah, you just have to just go for it. Oh, you have bad days sometimes too? No. <laughs> you just got to go for it though. You yeah. just got to like I have my audio bible like I was today in the backyard. The kids were going crazy before I left, but you know bedtime they're just bedtime's always wild obviously. Yeah. I just turned on my bible app on my phone and went in the back of my yard and just turned it on and was drinking my coffee before the show. You just got to you just got to get it in when you can. Mm-hmm. Then I listen to the bible app all, all the way up here. Listen to this, you know. Yep. Luke. So it's just like you just got to go for it. And then you'll, you'll, you know, it's not, it might just not turn on instantly, but you just got to keep going for it. So, all right, we got, we got calls. So I'm going to give the number out one more time. 888-564-6173, 888-564-6173 in studio with Sean McKeon. Uh, chilling, chilling, chilling. Here we go. We got Carlos calling in from uh, Marino Valley. What is good tonight? How you doing, Carlos? Uh, I'm good. Good to hear you, man. What, what's your uh, question tonight? Uh, I want to know if God was real, how can we let the, all the things that like bad things that happen in the world happen? Yeah. Perfect. That's a good question. What R- Ravi Zachariah broke this down. Yeah. Big you know, th- there's a l- lot of, um, th- this is probably out of all the ones that Ravi says that is asked, this is always going to be one of the popular questions. If God is real, why did bad things happen? Why did bad things happen to good people? Um, and he basically breaks down to the reality of, God is in control, and that might seem like a contradiction. Well, if God is in control, why does he allow these things? When we look at the creation of the world, the Bible says that God spoke the world into existence. The world around us displays that there is a creator because everything's all in order, just as we would never think that a car could come from nothing or a plane could come from nothing. For sure, we know that those things have a creator. We also believe that and I believe it's in our heart, too, because the Bible says that God has written eternity in our, in our heart. So we, we understand that there has to be a creator. Now, the world might blind us to that truth, but let's say that it is legitimate and, and it's true. God has created the heavens and the earth, the Bible says. And then why are we here? You know, because one of the things is that the Bible says that God has created man in his own image to have relationship, to have fellowship with him. And as you follow the Bible, which we believe to be true and has stood the test of time, it says that God, man was created in God's image to have a relationship. But when sin came into the human race, man died at that time spiritually. He also, the curse upon the earth at that time also was that he would eventually die physically. He didn't die physically at that moment, but he eventually died. But what started at that moment is that the sin nature that we are all born with in this world to this day is a result of that fall. And because of that, as you go through the pages of scriptures, it's not a coincidence that the first uh, encounter of the reality of sin is between uh, two brothers that were fighting, Cain and Abel. They're historic stories, but they're legitimate and true. And because of jealousy, because of envy, because of strife, it caused Cain to kill his brother Abel. We see the reality and the presence of sin in the world. God takes care of sin in the Old Testament by the atonement of, of, of um, animal sacrifices, showing there must be death to be life. And the reality of the pictures in the Old Testament shows the reality of a spiritual warfare and good and evil. When you go through it, all, all through the Old Testament, there's also a thing of hope. And the hope is that God was going to send his son into the world to die for the sins of the world. As we look at the world around us right now, Carlos, we don't see it in its perfect nature as it once was when it was created. The Bible says the Bible says that when God created the world and sin came into the human race, things also also fell. That's why we have diseases. That's why we have sicknesses. That's why we have the the the, the nature of man where the Bible says that his heart is deceitfully wicked. We have murders, we have strife, we have all of these things. This is not a perfect world. But also, God did not create us like robots either. And that's the most beautiful thing about a relationship with God. He doesn't force me to follow after him. And therefore, I have a will. You have a will. You have a will to believe all that I just said to you. And you have the ability to reject what I said to you. Um, And also, God gives us, when we use our will, we're able to submit our lives to the Lord. And we see that he is good. Um, the world around us, the, the evil that we're seeing in the world even today is a, I believe, an answer of sin is real. The enemy is real. He wants to discourage us. He wants to destroy. But Christ has come to give us life. And I think that all of us need to realize that we need to have a, 
have you ever heard the term um, a worldview? We all have a worldview. It's yeah. by the way that you view the world around you. The Christian, I'm going to break it down real quick. I know we're about to go to break. In four questions you have to ask yourself. Number one, origin. Where do we come from? Two, purpose. Why are we here? Three, is there such thing as right and wrong? And four, destiny. What happens to me when I die? The Christian faith has great answers. Origin, God created the heavens and the earth. Two, purpose. Created in man's image. Three, we believe in sin. We believe in right and wrong. That's why we see morality as being a real thing. And destiny, we believe that as you give your life to the Lord, there is eternity. There, there is heaven. There are many answers to life that we don't, uh, many questions that all of us have. We, I can't, I don't understand why babies die when they're young. I don't understand why uh, there's rape and all those things. But it is a reality that there is sin in the world. But it doesn't take away that God is almighty and God is all-powerful. Carlos, do you believe in God? Uh, yeah. Okay, awesome. So that was just one of your questions. All right, man. Well, I gave that to Sean because Sean always nails it on that. Check up Ravi Zacharias, Why Evil. Look it up on YouTube. You'll be blessed, man. Thanks, Carlos, for the question. Take it easy, brother. All right, we got a few minutes left. So I'm going to go ahead and plug. Hey, check this out. We're coming to Idaho. Um, July 8th through the 28th, we're going to be up there. Uh, if you know any friends or any people there, tell them to contact the Whosoever's at thewhosoever's.com. Send us an email. We are looking for more ministry opportunities. To uh, We're going to be doing a full skateboard tour, but we're going to do churches. Uh, like I was saying at the beginning of the show, we're going to do any kind of ministry opportunity that opens for us while we're up there. I'll be posted there for three weeks, so I have plenty of time to do a lot of ministry. Don't forget to go to the Whosoever's. We have our movie, our Kill the Noise Radical Revival movie. If you read the Gospels and you see the G Jesus and the disciples going out and and just spreading the gospel, praying for people, people getting healed, people getting set free. You will see it all on film from our last tour. And it's all for free on our front of our website. We have products that obviously support our mission. Um, and on the website, you could get all the past radio shows for the last four years. So four years. it's pretty amazing, man. You know, it's such an opportunity that we are on 111 stations now doing yeah. live shows. I mean, remember when we started with what, one station or it went to two stations yeah, first. No, it's amazing. Just amazing how God has uh, taken us from L.A. to New York City. It's just so rad. And uh, we're going to continue to see what God's going to do. Um, Sean. Yes. Calvary Chapel Diamond Bar. The, the church is popping off, right? Everything's back open for the most part. So, yeah, it's been amazing with your dad and everything. So ministry is going forward. We're seeing God do a lot of blessings right now in the ministry. What right are now. the services? Uh, Wednesday, 7 o'clock with your dad, Sunday morning, 8, 10, and 12. And then we have other services on Thursday in the evening and Friday night. I teach a study as well at 7.30 p.m. at Calvary Chapel Golden Springs. Calvary GS. CalvaryGS.org, the website, or follow on all the social media platforms. Calvary Chapel Golden Springs for all info. Bada bing, bada bang. More. Of the Ryan Reese Show. Coming up, post your questions at Ryan Reese on his Instagram, Twitter, and or Facebook.
Now, back, back, back to the Ryan Reese Show. All right, it's going down. Jacob, whosoever said, it took me, it took us 20 days to pick up our guests. <laughs> you know that fool's an ex-gangster. <laughs> you might get get. He got it, though. Uh, all right, 888 Call in, and let's go ahead and take these calls. Here we go. Let's do it. Um, boom, boom, boom. Where's she at? Uh, here we go. Paige calling in from Houston, Texas. Paige. Hey, guys. What's going on? How, how you doing tonight? <laughs> Uh, I'm trying to get over the COVID. <laughs> oh, yeah. Everyone is. Yeah. Went to the ER earlier this week. Oh, oh you bad. actually it's got it. High. Yeah. Oh, it's man. just like having a really, really bad flu. I think it's, I think it's definitely real. I think it's overhyped. Okay. Um, I am extremely immunocompromised. Uh, I've not worn masks. I've not changed my life. Mm-hmm. Um, and... Yeah, it's just, it's knocked the wind out of me. I've slept all week. I have had zero energy or oh, appetite. Man. But other than that, I'll, you know, I'm starting to feel better. How, I wanted to ask you guys. I, I'm, I have I'm one, wait, I have a question. I have one question for you. Yeah. So yeah. how long has it lasted? Because I, I haven't talked to anyone with COVID. How long has it lasted for you? Okay. Um, I uh, got sick Saturday night, last Saturday night. Uh-huh. I was sick all night, and I was running over 102 and couldn't keep anything in me. I thought it was just stomach flu or something like that. And on Monday, one of my girlfriends said, hey, eight of my relatives have this. And I'm like, it's stomach flu. She's like, no, you need to. I called the ER that I go to because I have chronic migraines. I'm there all the time. So, yeah. And told mm-hmm. them, they're like, you need to come down here now. They stuck me in an isolation room. They wouldn't even come in the room. They would just okay. call on my cell phone okay. and talk to me. Cats ran all the tests. Monday is, you know, now the weekend. I'm starting to feel better. Just sucks the energy completely out of you. Okay. Okay. So, well, we're, like we're, we're gonna flu. we're gonna pray. You got it. Thank you. I haven't heard that. We're gonna pray for you uh, after. Okay. So what's your, what's your question tonight? Okay, church. I'm in love with, been involved with for years. Very diverse. Um, now telling me that as a white person that I need to be educated on how to be a better white person. Mm -hmm. And I need to uh, reflect, educate, and take action towards justice and equality. I feel a little put off by that. And my heart is broken because now I've got to find a new church because I don't think that's why I go to church to hear. Plus I come from an all law enforcement family. I'm in fear of my family's life at this moment. Mm -hmm. We're like, praying to get someone out of law enforcement when that was our passion but it's too dangerous to go back well this this is the deal this is you know with everything that's going on you know you gotta you gotta read the scriptures and see how how jesus looks at people and everything you know jesus said in john 17 he said, 317, he says, uh, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him, whosoever is everybody. We have to, Jesus says, love your neighbor as yourself. Love the Lord God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength and love your neighbor as yourself. We need to treat people all equally. And the problem in the world, it's, it's sin. It's sin. Yeah. It's sin in man because we can't stereotype everyone the same because... People are dirty sinners, and this is why Jesus came yeah. out of eternity to die for the sins of the world. Man's heart is is corrupt. You know, it could be, you know, it, it, anyone could be corrupt. You know, religious figures could be corrupt. Presidents can be corrupt. Cops could be corrupt. Bums could be corrupt. I could be corrupt. <laughs> Whoever, everyone can be corrupt. It's sin in people. So I would definitely just, um, you know, you, you should be going to church for for politics. I don't, I don't believe, you know, we, we're supposed to yeah, churches yeah. for churches for for the word of God. And if you go to learn about Jesus, Jesus points to to loving yeah. all people, and it's all about should be all about God and not go into to politics. How we vote for politics is we read our Bible and then we line up because people go. Well, Ryan, if you don't talk about politics, well, how do you vote? I read the Bible, and then through the work of the Holy Spirit, and I line up 
what the Bible says, the, the teachings of the Holy Bible, how they line up, and whatever candidates line up the closest to the Word of God is where I lean to. Right. Because you're not going to find anyone that lines up with everything. That's just the yeah. bottom line. You just got to go who is the closest. So I want to, can I say a prayer for you? To think that, is it wrong to say that the only person that needs to be teaching me is the Holy Spirit and God? Read the Bible. The Bible is the Word of God. It's his voice. And then the Holy yeah. Spirit, well, he's the teacher. He will teach you. He will teach you what the exactly. word, the word, I mean, take the word for face value, what it says. Hey, I'm going to pray for you really quick. Yeah. Okay. I, you got, you still got symptoms of the, of the, of the, the flu, COVID and all that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Lord, I'm going to pray for you. Lord Jesus, I pray right now for, for Paige. You see her right where she's at, Lord. Just like that woman that was bleeding for 12 years. She, uh, she just reached out in desperation to touch you and healing power went out. Lord, you're the same yesterday, today, and forever. So I pray in Jesus' name for Paige. Lord, I just pray that you just touch her right now, Lord, and just remove and heal her. All that pain and all that uh, lack of energy and all that sickness, everything that the COVID has on her right now, in Jesus' name, we just ask for a mighty touch of your power that you just remove that and that you heal her in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And Lord, open up a door for her to find a new church where she go to that's not going to be caught up in in um, um, politics and all this crazy stuff. They need to get, she needs to get into the word and that relationship with you and everything will follow yeah. through that. In the mighty name yeah. of Jesus Christ, amen. Amen. You take amen. care, Paige. God bless you guys. All, all right. right. Thanks for your call. Okay. Um, go ahead. We're going to go ahead and take this next call. Uh, here we go. Here we go. Let me uh, put, do the number two. The number is yeah. 888-564-6173. Again, 888-564-6173. This is the Ryan Reese Show tuning that you guys are tuning into. So glad that you guys are here with us tonight. And Sean McKeon. What's up? The amazing co-host. <laughs> he has a face for radio. <laughs> Actually, we have video. So you know. I know. So. <laughs> so here we go. Let's take Matt. All right. We're going to take Matt out of Gardena, California. Matt. How you doing tonight? Hey, how's it going, Ryan? Dude, good, good. We're uh, we're just chilling. Stoked to be live talking to you. Awesome, awesome, man. Well, you know, one of my questions is, um, you know, I know, you know, being a believer, it feels like right now, more than anything, it feels like the devil's, you know, attacking the flesh. I mean, yeah. with me, I mean, just, through my dreams, through, mm -hmm. I mean, it's just like spiritually, I feel attacked. Even, you know, trying to, you know, feed myself. You know, when I'm, when I'm in the, when I'm in the Word in the morning, I just was wondering if, you know, if this is something that that's happening to you guys yeah. at this time as well. I would say I am, yes, for sure. And I have several. I've talked to several people without saying names. Um, just this last week, I probably talked to like eight different people that are some of my really good friends that are solid believers, and they are going through the same thing. <laughs> for sure, for sure, Matthew. Um, I, I I do ministry all the time, and just meeting with some of the pastors, some of the people that connected with, like, yeah, I think a lot of people are feeling it. Like, here in the United States of America, we are in unprecedented times, and really there's many areas of the world that are going through many challenges as well. And so that being the case, behind all the things that we see physically, on the backside, there's spiritual. There is a spiritual warfare that is there in politics, in our culture around us. And that being the case, there is going to be warfare. And as you look into the Bible, as it speaks about the last days, what's the temperature of the world going to be? The Bible says there's going to be a lot of confusion. And the enemy brings confusion. For us as children of God, we have to find a way to, to continue to encourage ourselves in the Lord. You know, there are going to be, you think about like a physical battle. You know, I've been doing a little bit of my history, like going through the Revolutionary War, the Civil War. There's, there's those moments where they have defeats. There's those times that they get discouraged. And then they have to be reminded why they're in the battle and to use the, the tactics that they have to fight the enemy. Well, for us spiritually... We're going to have some days where we feel off. We're going to have some moments where maybe we fail, but we encourage ourselves in the Lord. We stay in the race. We continue moving forward, 
and we walk in the Spirit of God. We'll have victory, but yeah, no, I think we're all feeling the same thing, Matthew. Uh, but when it comes to the enemy, remember when he tempted Jesus in the wilderness? It says that he would come back and he left for a season. And these moments, even though they seem like a long period of time, they will be in a season. It will eventually pass as far as like to the, these extremes, I believe. Um, I'm going to read something. Uh, Go ahead. Sorry. Oh, no, I was just going to say, it just it just seems now like more vivid. Like the, for sure. Everything like the evil, like the thoughts, like you'll be in, you know, worship and you're like, wait a minute. Why am I thinking things mm -hmm. like more than ever? It feels like, you know, I'm yeah. getting like attacked. And that's uh, that's where I was pretty much calling for prayer. Uh for that and pray for my wife. All right, I'm I'm with you. I, I'm in the same boat, getting getting attacked as well. I want to read something. Um, I'm not going to read the whole thing because it's several verses, but it's uh, it's in Romans eight. It says, and I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from mm -hmm. God's love. Neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither our fears for today nor our worries about tomorrow. Not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above. Or in the earth below, indeed, nothing at all, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that is revealed in Jesus Christ, our Lord. So I'm going to pray for you, Lord. I pray for Matt. Holy Spirit, I just ask that you will just fill him right now. Baptize him with the fire and the power. Give him peace, rest. And if there's any... Uh, as there's any demonic activity around him, oppression, God, I just pray that you would just break through it by the power of your spirit. Cover him in the blood that was shed on the cross and send your angels from heaven to protect his house and protect him, God, and just give him peace, Lord. And give him vision as far as um, ideas and uh, creativity for new ways uh, coming out of this COVID or even in the middle of this uh, pandemic to be used during this time, Lord. Give them inspiration through your Holy Spirit. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, amen. 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 Right. I'll pray for you guys. You guys have a good one. All right, man. All right, Love man. you, brother. Take, Take it care. easy. Thanks for calling. Sorry. Right on. Right on. Good stuff. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, which, which one you want to do? Let me give the number out again. 888-564-6173. 888-564-6173. Seven three, you can do the Tony one. All right, here we go. Let's grab this Tony one. Boom, Tony, what's going on? He's calling from Washington. What's up, Tony? What's up, guys? How you doing? We are chilling, man. Hey, Tony, I got a question for you. How are you watching this? Are you are you listening to on a station, or on the app or I something? I usually, I usually, I usually check check on YouTube. I don't, I don't usually watch on like the radio or anything like right. that. Oh, it's cool. Too late. I got a new baby, so. Congratulations. That's, that's just how that goes. Well, thanks. Welcome to sleep deprivation. Yeah, so, <laughs> right. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's awesome. I, I didn't man. know it could be this bad. Um, You're going to survive. But, don't worry. So, well, thanks. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, thanks guys. Appreciate it. Um, so my question is, as I'm a, a pastor in Seattle, my, my question is, is, do you guys feel like it's safe to go back to church mm -hmm. uh, for everyone? Like, who is it safe for? Yep. And then secondly, we have people who are coming in and they're refusing to social distance. They're refusing to mm -hmm. wear masks or at least saying that they are. Yeah. And so I, I feel like as church leaders, we're in a weird position because we have people who are saying we're not coming to church because we don't feel comfortable because there's people not following the rules. So uh, just a little guidance on how to approach this situation, making everyone feel comfortable. Yep. Also trying to follow all the laws and not offend anyone. I'm going to pass it to Sean McKeon because he's he works uh, with my dad closely at Calvary Chapel Diamond Bar. And they they have the whole thing set up. They've been through many classes to, to organize everything. So what, what are you guys doing? Yeah, I think the main thing, um, and it seems like you, you have a heart too, like communication is key, obviously. And leadership is needed in these, in these days. As far as being safe to meet, obviously it's all going to be dependent upon your location. We're here in California that has gone through different phases, uh, some spikes, some not. I know they're trying to say that there's more that's happening, but it's more down south. But then it's really we really did take that that guidelines or follow all the CDC guidelines and kind of checked out what the governor was saying, checked out what was taking place in our community because we care for the people. That's why we went on the online services for a couple months. But then we knew that it, when it was time to start transitioning up, we made sure that we did multiple videos and communications with our audience and emails of what it's going to be expected as they come in. 
and like really encouraging them to have a vision like this isn't going to be forever it's going to be a season but you need to be with us through this process and just have patience with us we're going to make mistakes along the way but we are making the steps that we're making that you and your family will, will be safe and so what we did was made sure that in our sanctuary we made sure our capacity was very low in the beginning 15 20 percent and we have a big sanctuary and then once that hit, hit a number, then we put them in the coffee house. And then we had seating outside, which is much safer and the social distancing. We had signs up. We kind of communicated those things, overly communicated myself and the other guy that does announcements and communications online to just kind of bridge that gap. You have to have that heart of courtesy. The hospitality is key. It's, you know, sometimes we could be doing all the wrong right things and might have the wrong attitude. You want to make sure that all your helpers and everyone have great attitudes. Um, signage is important. Communication is important. But as far as the people need to meet, and if your um, area is able to have services, you're able to have that, that freedom to do it, I would definitely do it, even if it's at a smaller capacity, because people do need that fellowship. Uh, but bear with them. I mean, this is tough for them, too, as it is tough for you guys in the ministry. But just follow like a, a standard, like, you know, blueprint like that. And my name's Sean McKeon. I'm at Cary Chapel Golden Springs during the week. Um, we can get my number and call me anytime during the week. I can help you through this process because we help kind of build our whole infrastructure for this process. Well, I'm going to give you a call. All right. Gotcha. Awesome, man. Thanks, guys. Keep going for it, dude. Hey, I, I, yeah, I appreciate you guys. You guys have been so helpful in my life over the last very many years. So I pray for you guys all the time, and you guys have grown me so much, even as a spiritual leader. So you guys are great. Dude, awesome, man. thanks a lot, man. That's so that's so cool, man. Yep. Thanks, Tony. Yep, you have a good one. You too, man. Dude, that's yep. so cool, Bye. man. You never know, you know. You never. That's uh, legit. So mm -hmm. awesome when you hear a uh, cool little testimony. Doing ministry like and having a brand new baby. Been there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Dude, my, my son's almost, he's like nine months now. I can't believe Time it. Time goes by quick. Dude, I know. Thank I God. I can't believe you have four kids. <sighs> when we started the show, you had no kids. I knew I shouldn't have started the show. <laughs> I knew that something was going to happen. <laughs> uh, I think gray hair is coming in now, too. All right. So uh, let's go ahead. And um, I don't even know if these phone lines are open. Give out the number one more time. Okay, here we go. 888-564-6173. 888-564-6173. There, uh, well, there was one I was going to pick up. There was someone's, or she, she went to prayer or something. Well, I just got a text from one of my friends. Okay. Uh, Jacob, he said his son, uh, he says, please keep Frankie in prayer. He had another seizure. Mm. The other the other day, thanks. All right, we're gonna pray for Frankie, and and you know all the everyone that's listening, we could all join together in prayer because that's how it goes down. We could unite in prayer. So, Lord Jesus, we pray for Frankie that um, God just touch his life, Lord. We know that he's been getting those seizures since uh, that football game, but we just ask that you just reverse it, Lord, and that you just uh, make him whole. Just make his whole body, his mind, his 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 head, his brain, everything, his nerves. Everything that's firing off there, Lord, just um, correct it all uh, by your uh, by your power, and if you will, in Jesus' name, Amen. Yup, yup. It's uh, you know, crazy, crazy times. As these calls are coming in, Rain, I, I was looking at one of the ones that was sent in. I think this is a, a good one because I think a lot of people will ask this question. Question is this: Can God restore a broken marriage? Can God restore a broken marriage? Yeah. Yeah, he can. God can restore anything. You know, I think that sometimes we don't think, we get our eyes off who he really is. Mm -hmm. So can God do this? Can God do that? Can God provide? Let me. I guess I'll just use some illustrations. Can God provide? I'm, I don't have a job. I don't have money to, to eat. Um, you know, I'm looking for, will he ever bring my soulmate, you know, my wife or my husband? Um, my, my marriage has been destroyed. You know, when we look at who God is, he created the heavens and the earth. It says that he spoke it into existence. Mm -hmm. He's, he can do anything. If he could create this world, if he could create life form, if he could create, you know, you look at like nature, you look at the animals, you look at the insects, you look at the design, he could do anything. He is, he is God, but it all comes down to, to trust. Mm -hmm. Do we trust him and do we allow him to actually fix things because when you want God to fix things and change things in your life, 
you have to literally give him the keys yep. to the to the to, to the wheel, I guess. You gotta let him take control. And there's gonna be things in your life that he's gonna want to change. It's almost like the um, thinking about it now is uh, it's in Jeremiah, like in in twenty, like if the Potter at the wheel is that yep. Jeremiah twenty two yep. or something. Yep. It talks about he tells Jeremiah go down to the Potter's house and you're gonna see the Potter, you know, making the wheel. And what happens is he sees the Potter and he's he's forming this this clay into this vessel, and then it doesn't turn out the way he wants it. So what the Potter does is he he smashes it down and breaks it, and then he he does it again. And in the same way, you know, God can get our life and your life could look like this vessel. But what God wants to do is he might need to just break it down and remold you and shape you into that new vessel yep. for that new season in your life. Yep. You know, maybe you were the certain vessel, the certain person in this marriage, but your marriage got destroyed. So what God now has to do is he has to break down the two, smash it down and reform you guys. And he's going to do that work. And um, when he does that work is when he's pressing on that clay it's it's he's putting pressure and sometimes he has to put pressure in your life to form you and he has to like then he has to, he has to smash it down again it's this whole process of of developing mm. and forming you into that vessel for that for that season but it all goes down to that that trust and submission to Christ and saying God I want you to work and if you allow him he will do it and it's not going to be easy no it's not it's not easy it's not going to be like God take my take the keys to my life Fix my marriage, and it's going to be done. It's, he's not a genie. Mm -hmm. You don't just rub on the genie and say, hey, I want I want these things. Yeah, he's not a genie, but he will work, and he will get it done, and it takes time sometimes. You know, that re reference you did on, on the potter, it's in uh, Jer Jeremiah 18, and I believe it's key. Um, that, that shaping, molding, like, and things hurt sometimes. Um, I think about the scripture that so many people love. It's in Romans 8, 28, that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. But the next verse is key. It says this. It explains the purpose to conform us into the image of his son. And how does he do that? Like the process you're talking about right now, Ryan. He shapes you. He breaks you down. And if you want a marriage to be restored, it can. But it has to be brokenness. There has to be humility. There has to be forgiveness. There has to be a heart that wants to... One thing I tell a couple when they're about to get married, three words, commitment, communication, unity. Commitment, I'm in this for the long haul through the ups and downs of life. Communication, we're going to communicate. We're going to work through our issues and problems. We're not going to let the enemy have a foothold. And unity, we're going to be on the same page because Satan wants to divide. Christ wants to bring us together. All right. Well, we have three minutes left, and we have a couple calls that I'm just going to um, – fire off Naomi from Palm Springs California says I have kids who are struggling with drugs did you guys go to rehab um no didn't go to rehab I basically got a bible and I started getting to plugged into church and I was going to church seven days a week and I was reading I was praying and I was just separated myself from those party atmospheres from the drugs and I just went full on with God and God just did a supernatural work in my life Sean did the same thing yep. Just started going to church, getting plugged in, reading the Bible, praying, and God did that too. And we were, we were doing it big time, drugs. So if we can do that, God can do anything with anybody. Um, we got probably like two minutes left. If that, I want to plug the whosoever's. We are going to Idaho on tour. Um, I'm going to be up there in about a week. I'm going to be there from July 8th to the 28th. Um, the week of the 27th. To the 28th that week, and we're doing a full skate park tour. I got the whole whosoever team coming up. We're gonna to tour the skate parks, do an outreach. We're gonna go into the churches. Uh, we're gonna go into youth groups. We're gonna go into um, um, Indian reservations, juvenile detention centers, boys' homes, girls' homes, anywhere we can get in. Contact us at info at whosoever's.com or the whosoever's.com. Just hit us up and invite us. We will come out. We're already up there. We want to party. We want to reach people for Jesus. Uh, you know, reaching people for Jesus is parting me, to me, you know. It's like, because when someone gets saved, it says all the angels in heaven rejoice. Parties pop off every time people get saved. And we're going to see a lot of people get saved. I already know it. Because right now, the harvest is more ripe than ever. I could, Dude, I haven't even been out doing evangelism. Yeah, no, it's, it's going to be legit. It's going to be so legit. I cannot even wait for this. I am so amped. And we're going to be the first ones back on tour. We're doing it. The whosoever's. We're coming.
And on that note, I would just say what we started out with at the beginning. Look at the times that we're living in today and have a heart for God. Be open by God's Spirit. Love people. Don't get bogged down with hate and, and confusion. Be somebody that is led by the Spirit of God. Before you post something crazy, before you say something crazy, make sure that you filter everything through the Word of God and prayer, and God will grant you wisdom where you're not going to be starting more strife. Yeah, be careful to just jump on bandwagons when, when everything's trending. Sit back, use wisdom before posting because uh, it's a doggy dog world out there right now. That's right. All right, man. <laughs> Peace. Love you. This has been The Ryan Reese Show. To connect and find out more about Ryan, click on ryan-reese.com. Check us out next Saturday at 9 p.m. for The Ryan Reese Show.